Good afternoon. Recently, an old friend from my Arts Council days emailed to say he'd found a treasure I might be interested in. He remembered that the Arts Council of Fayetteville, Cumberland County sponsored a program called Poetry for Older People, resulting in a little soft cover anthology called Old Age Ain't for Sissies. And my friend found it on Amazon. I hadn't forgotten the program. It was one of the first I produced as executive director of the Arts Council. But until my friend contacted me, I'd almost forgotten that I still have one of the books. I'm so glad I brought it with me when I moved to the forest, because that's what I'll be reading to you from today. Back in 1978, the Arts Council matched grants from the National Endowment for the Arts and the North Carolina Arts Council to support a pilot project we called Poetry for Older People. We wanted to bring a poet to our community to talk to senior citizens about their lives and encourage them to record their stories in some enduring way. I don't remember how we were lucky enough to get Julia Alvarez as our poet in residence. We didn't know at the time, maybe she didn't know at the time, that she would become one of our country's best known writers of prose, poetry, and children's books. You may recognize two of her novels, How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents and In the Time of the Butterflies. One of her books is in the Forest Library. Among Julia's awards are the F. Scott Fitzgerald Award and the 2013 National Medal of Arts presented by President Obama. And to think we were lucky enough to have this yet-to-be-recognized talent conducting our very own Poetry for Older People program. And note, we didn't call it poetry for old people, even though Julia does in her introduction. Maybe it's because I recognized at the time that one day I would be an older person too. Perhaps the best way to introduce old age ain't for sissies before we get to the actual work is to read to you from Julia's introduction. The title is taken from Sayings by Helen Moore. This is the book. Once upon a time, not so long ago, the Fayetteville Arts Council asked me to come to North Carolina to conduct a series of poetry workshops for old people. I had worked in poetry in the school's programs for two years in Kentucky and later in Delaware, had conducted bilingual writing workshops for elementary school children, but I had no training for working with old people. I had a degree that made me qualified and publications that made me professional, and armed with those prerequisites, I thought I could teach poetry for, to anyone, pompous as a frog. Instead, for three months, I sat in the basement of rural Baptist churches, in sunshine centers, in nursing homes, and listened. Old people, many of whom couldn't read or write, came to the workshops thinking I was a faith healer or a social security lady who might increase their monthly checks. There are, I am sure, grandmothers and great aunts in small towns around Fayetteville who still remember those three months as a failed attempt to get me to confess I was sent by the IRS. But mostly they told each other their stories and I listened and wrote them down. We sat in rooms and visited with each other. And although I had a class prepared, a theme for the day, a technique to be tried out, Many times they had something to say more important than color poems, more lyrical and resonant than haikus. I was taken in by their presence, the music in their voices, the poetry of their lives. These were not workshops. They were whatever it is that happens when people get together and talk. An ancient dialogue that reminded me of being back at the river in Santo Domingo or sitting at my grandmother's knee and listening to my own history. There was nothing to teach these people about language. They knew how to handle it, not with the studied astuteness of the graduate student, but with the instinct of people who cannot go to books to be entertained, but must captivate each other with their own words. They are a group that has not been listened to, not because they have nothing to say, but because they are shy with their natural eloquence is made suddenly made public. Uh, 
In the company of those they trust, they can be wonderful hams, their humor rich and precise. I had come to North Carolina with books and folders full of poetry ideas, exercises, academic strivings after fun, and found that the most exciting themes to talk about were those that had moved so many generations. Conversations about childhood, memories of times gone by, conversations about work, how they supported themselves, the hard lives they lived, conversations about regret, what they wished they could do over, conversations full of warnings, advice, sayings. But most of all, the women talked about men, what marriage was like, what men are like. These were women who had not led easy lives, who were within a generation or two of slavery and had slaved themselves to earn enough for their big families, whose husbands had often abandoned them or lay under a stone in the yard outside, whose music were hymns and their only outings to church. They had buried husbands, children, mothers, fathers, and had learned and earned perspective. They could look at their lives with both precision and affection. Their poems came out of experience and passion, not invention and cleverness. In a society for the most part ignores the old, their wealth of wisdom and memories brims over unheard. Older societies, like Santo Domingo's, still listen to their old, hoping to hear in the past something of the future, or to gather hope from those most tested and tried. Through these shared lives, may we be helped by their vision, rooted by their history, delighted by their lives, and given hope by their endurance. Julia Alvarez. And by the way, if you're interested, you can get the book on Amazon starting at $39.99. Nobody told me. Who, told, who tells you how to grow old? Teacher told me how to study. Preacher told me how to pray. Mother told me many things, how to work, how to play, but she never told me how to grow old. Bunny Bell, City Recreation Department. Dancing. I loved to dance when I was young. When a girl got up and danced well and the boy couldn't keep up with her, they called that the boy losing the girl, the girl losing the boy. I used to dance so well, I lost a lot of boys. Tiny Wade, Adult Day Activity Center. I regret. I regret I got married. My husband didn't do right. I thought I was doing something big, but I found better. Never brought me nothing but three yards of material at 20 cents a yard. We were married in February, and he left me in June. Tiny Wade. Maddie's story. When I was three years old, my grandmother had an apron with a big pocket inside. There were 15 of us in the family. While my mother was looking at her dead sister-in-law, I ran my hand in her pocket and got a tube of snuff. I put some in my mouth on an old toothbrush. The stuff made, snuff made me very sick, and my mother did a good job on my other end. Maddie McCallum, AME Zion Sunshine Center. The man who walked into my life, he said I was bossy, didn't have no sense, drove a car, drove too fast. He walks too fast. I say, did your father pull your mother? He can't even hear me. He says, you're just like those old Purcells. I don't even know them. I was a grim until I married him. But he was good. He just walked too fast. But he didn't walk out of my life. I'm still hanging on to him. Maddie McCallum. Red lilies. I went down to Hay Street Methodist and bought two buckets of red Easter lilies. When they bloomed, they had four flowers, and I was crazy about those lilies. I was crazy about those lilies. They put something in me. I went out and came back, and my husband had them all chopped down. He said they were weeds, and he lay them flat. Maddie McCallum. The lady with the vanishing mind. 
When I get up, my speech sets down and I just sit right down there with it. Maddie McCallum. The two men in my life. One of them was good, one of them was bad, but I hope they're both in heaven. He was good. I reckon the Lord made him good to be as good as he was good. He treated me like I was a baby. He wanted to wait on me. He called me baby at home and honey in his store. I'd rather not talk about the bad one. He was just too bad to tell it. He drank and he cussed. One of them was quinine. One of them was ice cream. The good one was better. The bad one was bitter. Lizzie Davis, AME Zion Sunshine Center. The girl who refused to be a slave. I used to work for a woman, thought she was better than anyone else. One day I was going by her house. She came out, told me how sick she was, how she needed someone to live with her. And there wasn't much work to do, she said, but keep a path for her and give her three warm meals where she could take her medicine. She paid a dollar a day. But when I started, it was do the washing, do the ironing, do the vacuuming and mopping. And then she had a boyfriend coming. I had to cook for him. Steak suppers, pies, biscuits. Then her mother came and asked me to fix for her. Finally, I quit. She always used to say anyone down below where she was was nothing. That took me in. So I'd rather go back to being nothing than being a slave for her. Lizzie Davis, AME Zion Sunshine Center. My husband, often he would come in as drunk as a dog. May I fix you something to eat, I'd say. No, you can't boil water, he'd grumble. One day he wanted some neck bones. When I put them before him, he threw the pot and all out the door. After five years since he died, I think, what a waste. When I, offered to, when I offered to wash his clothes, he would say, no, you can't clean them. I loved him, but whiskey brought out the worst in him. Katie Pearl Love, Cumberland Community Action Center. Sorry. Considering marriage, a lot of people get married and they're not ready. Then a lot of people get married when they're older and they're not ready yet. Just like going to the ocean. You think you want to go in the water, but it's too cold. Once you get in it, it ain't as cold as you think. Lucy Johnson, Cedar Creek Sunshine Center. The disappearing husband. My husband didn't stay home. I don't know where he went. I reckon he went everywhere. After women, maybe, maybe rabbit hunting. Could have been coon, possum. He was after something. I reckon he found it. I reckon he did. Nola McLaurin, Cumberland County Action Program. On Matisse's Harmony in Red. If I could go in this painting, I'd ask her how she got the walls and the rug to match. I'd ask her if she got her flowers from the trees in the garden. I'd ask her where she got her fruit, how many she was having for dinner. She might have room for me. Elizabeth McPherson, Ideal Rest Home. Memory. Memory, I'm glad I've got you living in my mind, that I can just reach in and pull you out and think of these things anytime. Sometimes, memory, you're lazy. You don't come out and help me like the time I left the key in the house and shut the door, or the time I tried to sing the song my father used to sing, but you didn't remind me of the song of Fair Ellender. But, memory, you always remind me to turn off my stove and now to put my key in my pocket. Without you, I'd be lost forever and not even remember the children or the God who gave you to me. Fanny Blackwell, Hope Mills Sunshine Center. My country house. I remember, I remember the big house where I was born. It had many rooms, it had many doors and big windows. There was a large back porch and a wide hall in between. 
I used to play all kinds of games in this hallway. There was a closet under the stair. There I played hide and seek. In summer, we stored melons there, also tools and hoes and other items. The large porches were our entertainment centers. There, Pa, Ma, and us kids would sing and play on moonlight nights. We did not have any electric lights or indoor plumbing, but I'll tell you, we had fun, real fun. We were together. We had love. Those days are gone, but the memory lingers on. The house burned down and the ashes scattered, and my family has scattered. But many nights when I should be sleeping, I think of those days and can't help weeping. But however I cry, however I sigh, I will never live those days again. Naomi Stanley, AME Zion Sunshine Center. The Whipping. He'd wait a long time, but he promised me a beating. He'd say, girl, you better walk the chalk line. Finally, he'd get me. He'd take my head and put it across his leg, take my legs and hook them between his ankles. All of this would be out. He had an old-fashioned razor strap split into nine tails. Every time he hit me, it was nine licks. He'd say a poem in between each lick. You sleep in my bed and call it a bunk. Whack. You eat my food and call it junk. Whack. I never heard the end. I was hollering too much. Marie B. Ward, AME Zion Sunshine Center. In the year of 68, in July, there came a storm. We had had a long drought. That morning, I went over to my son's home. He was talking about the Bible, asking me different questions. He wanted to know about Jesus, about what he said, I'm going away, and wherever I am, you may be also. Mother, you're doing well. God's blessed you. I can see you get around. Jump up off. Whenever I get up, I got to take my time. Whenever he got through talking about this, he said, don't worry about me. Wherever I die, wherever it is, I'll be in the arms of Jesus. When the storm came that same evening, he walked out in the yard, and the lightning killed him. I heard the lightning going, and the kids were fussing. I said, lay down and be quiet. God is working now. The radio in the kitchen didn't work, but we kept it plugged in for the time. It had a clock on it. When that lightning came, it jarred that radio, and it started playing loud. And that was the same lightning that killed my son. Sarah Brown, Cedar Creek Sunshine Center. Got to take a whole lot of what you don't want to get a little bit of what you do. Sarah Brown. Can never tell, a man, can never tell when a man be telling the truth, like the little boy was about the lightning bug. One hot summer day, his daddy was working on his old car. He was perspiring and sweating, too. Little boy ran up to him and asked him, Daddy, what makes a lightning bug light? Daddy told him, Go ahead, boy, I don't know. Little boy ran around the house, and he found a lightning bug. So he decided he'd lay him on a rock, take another rock, and crack him open. And so he did, and when he did, he saw the light. He ran back to his daddy. He told him, Daddy, you couldn't tell me what made a lightning bug light, but I can tell you. Son, what is it, Daddy, he says. I'll tell you. Stuff is in him. Sarah Brown. Wine. It feels good and cold going down. When you get through drinking it, you feel like you own a $1,000 and you ain't got a thing. Paul Kelly, Adult Day Activity Center. White Rose. It was on a Mother's Day, and there was one white rose opened on the bush. Mother was going to wear the white rose. She sent me out for it, and the thorns scratched my hand. I got blood all over the white rose. It was a big rose, and she picked the bottom petals off where the blood rose where the blood was, and wore the bud. Roxy Spell, Hope Mills Recreation Club. I stayed. 
I stayed with my husband almost 50 years. We raised 12 head of children. They worked me pretty hard. I thank the Lord for them now. I wouldn't take nothing for them now, but I would have sold them for a penny then. <laughs> Minnie McNatt, Cumberland County Action Program. Why? Why does the child love his be mother better than his father? The father put it in jail for nine months. The mother takes it out for life. Cleo Williams, Cedar Creek Sunshine Center. Life story. I used to be a farmer. I loved to keep busy. I love my snuff. Charlie Starling, Happy Valley Rest Home. I don't believe nobody's been on God's moon. They put on anything they want to and make it sound good. If God had wanted them to go to the moon, he'd have given them a way to get there. They pay a lot of money for someone to say they've been to the moon. If they go to the moon, why don't they keep on to heaven? Lula McLaurin, Cumberland County Action Program. Sugar is sweet, lard is greasy, honey, if you love me, don't be uneasy. That one was by Leroy Gibson, Cedar Creek Sunshine Center. Work. If I had to pick 100 or 200 pounds, sorry, start over. I had to pick 100 or 200 pounds of cotton a day, or pod beat me or kill me, one or the other. One row, two rows up one, down the other. Where I saw that ha cotton hanging, I'd pick that cotton off the stalk. The sack had strings on the shoulders. I'd pick with both hands and put it in the sack. Then they'd weigh it in the scales. You had to do it. If you wanted to live, you'd pick. Rosa Patterson, Cumberland County Action Program. Once when. I was a little boy. My my father and mother used to take us children to church on the wagon. We lived a long ways from the church. There was a little girl I loved. When we started home, I would sit on the tail end of the wagon and turn my face toward her house, look at her just as far as I could see her. She loved me and would throw kisses at me as far as she could see me. John Gillis, AME Zion Sunshine Center. Not me. Sweet little old lady, not me. Heavens no, not me. To be sure, I can't see as well as I did, but I manage. I can't climb a mountain very well, but I can still walk a couple of miles. I can't remember people's names very well, but neither can lots of younger folks. I can still rake the yard and push a wheelbarrow. I can still bake a cake and enjoy eating it. And I do enjoy life and living. Sweet little old lady, not me. Helen Moore, City Recreation Department. I remember. I remember sleeping in a cold bedroom in the wintertime down south. <clears throat> the memory lingers on my mother calling and waking me those cold, cold mornings of jumping out of bed, putting on my trousers and shirt as quickly as possible, and running to the living room barefoot to get my cold back near the fire in the fireplace. I recall the sound of the fire, many times popping and sizzling, but it seemed I would never get warm. Mother calling, get your shoes on, son, and wash for breakfast, then sitting before the fire and pulling on stockings and lacing a pair of cold, cold shoes. Comer B. Vaughan, Hope Mills Recreation Club. Thistle. It looks like a man's shaving brush. We used to cut the prickly leaves just before they were going to seed, then carefully cut the bloom and make a broom for our dollhouse. Margaret Plato, Ideal Rest Home. Gentians. The only time I saw one was in a bouquet brought to me from the mountain. She had picked several just before she left and she wrapped them in a wet paper towel. 
and she gave them to me because I had never seen one. Margaret Plato. Gentians. <laughs> it's spelled G-E-N-T-I-A-N-S, gentians. Sound. We went up to the mountains to get away from everyone. We had a room in the back where we could hear the waterfall. It was a tinkly sound as it came down all night. I said, I wish we could take that home with us. He said, I can't hear it. So he went up to the window. He was deaf in one ear, and he turned his good ear to the river, and he heard it very lightly, but he heard it. He tried to describe it, but he said he couldn't think of the words for it. So we put it away in our memories. Margaret Plato. I can. I can beat a tin tub or a cake pan. When I used to be at home and little children would come, they'd dance and sing, and I'd be beating the tin tub and singing, Oh, oh, Jared M. Road, and sweet chariot come and carry me home. Rosetta O'Neill, AME Zion Sunshine Center. And by the way, this book is full of photographs of everybody who said these poems. A red rose bush. I went to a lady's house one day. She had the prettiest bush. She dug up a piece and gave it to me. I set it in my yard. It stayed there for two years, and it didn't die, but it didn't bloom. The year I started to dig it up, it bloomed, and that's what saved that bush. Ira Tucker, Cumberland County Action Program. Love. There was an apple tree on an old lawn, and the old man shook it and shook it, and the old woman took it and took it. Mary McMillan, Adult Day Activity Center. I didn't know. I went to Myrtle Beach, but I didn't know that was the ocean. I thought I'd see bigger water than that. Lula Holmes, Cumberland County Action Program. My hair is gray. My step is slower. Inside I am the same. My heart brims over. Sybil Patrick, Lafayette Recreation Club. And by the way, if you're interested, I may have said this, you can get the book on Amazon starting at $39.99. That's it. <laughs>